Hey everybody, it's time for another Tech Tip of the Week. And this week we're looking at Google Arts and Culture. Now this is an outstanding website, covers a variety of different topics that I think everybody in the building can find something for them that they could potentially use in their classrooms. Google has done a great job of putting together a lot of resources under one umbrella here, whether you're looking for museums, different pieces of artwork, uh, challenging games that your students can play that cover a multitude of topics, or different cultural sites for your students to explore. This is basically like a field trip built within a website for thousands upon thousands of different topics. So we'll start through and work through a couple of these different uh, categories here, starting out with museums. And Google has gone through thousands of museums, partnered with them, and created this online platform in which students can access a lot of their resources. And so these are from all around the world. They cover a variety of topics, all the way from art to NASCAR, um, and it has a little bit of everything for everybody. Uh, it's a little bit overwhelming. You can go A to Z trying to find something, or you can go to the map if there's a particular place, and you can see literally how there are museums all around the globe on all of these uh, continents, aside from Antarctica, that we can dive into here. Uh, and so we're going to go to A to Z and take a look. you got the Abraham Lincoln Foundation of the Union League of Philadelphia, uh, you've got tons of art museums, you've got history museums, all the way down you've got the Alder Planet uh, Adler Planetarium from Chicago, uh, the Met from New York City is in here. There's going to be a lot of places that you're awfully familiar with uh, as we go through. So you can just search for uh, here in ABC order, take a look and see what there might be here. We come all the way down to the ends, and uh, I was taking a look at earlier today uh, the NASA Museum. So if I click on it, all right, I've got all these stories that I can click through these online exhibits, and we'll take a look at what that is. And then it has different pieces of the collection that we scan, can scan through as well. And as you can see, there's over 160,000 items just within the NASA collection alone. So if I was doing, um, let's say I'm doing a report, and as you can see, this covers history as well as science with Newton's third law, acceleration. But let's say that I'm doing a project on Apollo 11. Okay, in the first moon landing, I click on it and Google has put together this page that will walk me through with some primary documents, different photos, all right, uh, different captions is going to give me an opportunity to explore this particular topic. There are videos embedded in here as well that I can watch. And as you go through, you can see they've lumped all this together, all these different pieces from Apollo 11 together under this one collection that's going to allow students to explore from the training all the way through the landing. And then it's going to give me other stories from NASA that might uh, correlate to that as well. So you've got uh, Ellison Onizuka. He was uh, the first Asian American to fly in space, tragically lost his life in the Challenger incident, but they've got one on him. All right. And as you can see, I can scroll through and do this entire bi biography on him all the way through his career. And I've got a video here at the end uh, that'll kind of sum up things as well. So they've got these great museum pieces, okay, these stories, and then they've got different types of collections here. So all the artifacts that they have dealing with different types. So let's say I want to do something with earth science right here, and I've got all these photos that I can choose from. They give me bits of information, right, with their background. And then down here at the bottom, these are going to be all the items from this particular museum in one area. And it's gonna let me organize it by the most popular. I can organize it by color, but I can also do it by time frame. okay? And this is something that all the museums, whether it's the Met Museum, the NASA Museum, all right, or any of the others that Google has to offer, you can go and explore by time period and it will categorize everything in the way that you need them. So students can go and look for primary sources and look for these documents, all right? by a time frame. So if I go back, uh, let's say that I want to go to the Met Museum. All right, so I'll click on M's. I'm going to scroll down until I find it. Hopefully I don't zoom past it. As you can see, there are a ton of these museums that you can choose from. All right, uh, we see the McLean County Museum of History. Uh, that's in Bloomington, Indiana. And so we're going from huge museums like the Met all the way down to our local museums. Uh, that students can explore. All right, so here we go, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I can click on it. OK, 
Okay, the Met, it's an incredible place if you've ever had a chance to be there. Um, cer something certainly uh, worth checking out if you're ever in New York City. But as you can see, much of the same thing laid out just like uh, the NASA Museum. I can click on these different exhibitions and it's going to give me all of my information here. I've got a video on the making of the Met, how it was founded, the 150th anniversary, and then on down through the different types of um, different types of explorations that you can do. So if we toggle on back home, okay, so that was the museums. Okay, now we're going to slide over to the artwork, and we're going to look at the different masterpieces. So uh, they've got an art camera here. You can go look through 12 uh, artworks that you'll love to zoom into, and this will take students step by step through different pieces of art uh, and kind of give the backstory of what, uh, what this art is all about. So you've got the Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh, okay, and it's going to allow us to zoom in here and look into the inner parts of this painting and allow students to get a first-hand look. You got the Tower of Babel, okay? And it'll, once again, students can go through and look and explore. So a lot of artwork here. They've got details here, uh, some, zoom, uh, some stuff in the Rembrandt, the Night Watch, one of his best works back in 1642, all right? And this will give him, students just a whole bunch of information on the background of that particular picture. Okay, uh, we'll come back to games in just a second. We'll go over to cultural sites. Uh, this is an incredible thing that students can once again use. Here they've got it all broken down, uh, overall topics. We can go to A to Z and break it down even further. Okay, all these different topics that students can look through. Uh, this has it broken down geographically. We'll click on the United States. Okay, we've got over a million items that students can pour through in the United States category. Once again, you've got the different collections, what we were just looking at earlier with some of the museums. You've got the different stories. Okay, so if I wanted to do the United States of America, this is kind of like the artist interpretations of it. Once again, I can slide through this and it'll let students walk through these different stories and gain a better understanding and kind of get a visual cue of what some of these things were. If I was doing a project on the presidents and their inaugurations, this was done in partnership with the Smithsonian. I can do this as well, go through. I've got George Washington uh, that I've popped up on. I can scroll all the way through and get a look at the different parts of their presidency, okay? James Madison, Andrew Jackson, the bill, uh, the bill plays for uh, promoting their inaugurations, things of that nature. So a lot of different and great primary documents here available through Google Arts and Culture. And a lot of this stuff, guys, it's like trying to, uh, it's like going on a field trip here. If I go to the Explore tab, okay, I've got a host of 360 degree videos that students can choose from. All right, if I wanted to go inside a space state or inside the space shuttle discovery here, I've got a 360 degree video that I can toggle around. It'll talk to me. There's sound to this video. We're going to cut that off right now so it doesn't talk over me. Okay but it's gonna allow me to navigate around, all right, in an interactive video to get a first-hand look at the space shuttle discovery. That's gonna be something that our kids don't have really an opportunity to go do from their classroom, okay, or us take a field trip down there, but through Google Arts and Culture, we're able to give our students that opportunity, okay? And as you can see, there's a ton of 360 videos for our students to choose from, all right? different categories, historical figures. We've talked about this a little bit. All right, I can go through, take a look, and it'll break down all the stuff that they have, all the resources they have for different historical figures. So if I wanted John F. Kennedy right here, it's got three stories, the Kennedy airlifts, that's going back um, to the Cold War, okay, his different milestones, then obviously we choose to go to the moon and the moon shot, okay? And then all the different topics, uh, different photos that we have, and it's organized in a timeline that people can choose from. All right, so as we go through all of this, guys, it's just a tremendous resources, uh, lots of collections, lots of topics that you can go do. Uh, you can search kind of nearby if you want to give it your uh, location. And then guys, finally, the play, okay? Uh, Google Arts and Culture has built in a lot of games that allow our students, uh, no matter what their ability levels, to find something here that's going to challenge them and allow them to interact with what they've been learning, whether it's a visual crossword puzzle, uh, doing some comparing what came first, uh, trying to test their knowledge of where things fit on the historical timeline, okay, different uh, visual aspects that they can do 
guests in the line. They've got a lot of art coloring uh, that students can participate in. Google Arts and Culture, just a tremendous resource for our kids to be able to use and for us to be able to use in our classrooms. If you have any questions about it, feel free to stop by. I know this has been a quick overview of it. Uh, it goes much more in depth, um, but feel free to play.